Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Maryville University. Uh, we are going on a very traditional campus tour today. Um, so currently we are in our first floor of Gander Hall. Um, so this includes right here, we have the visitor center right over here where you would check in for all of our tours and everything. Um, and then also this is a, like your one-stop shop um, for all of admissions and financial aid, um, as well as registrar and everything for that. Um, so Maryville University makes it really easy for all of our students um, to when they get here, um, that it's a one-stop shop in admissions. So your admissions counselor can help you with if you have questions about your classes, your financial aid, about how to get here, housing, anything like that, we're your one-stop shop for that. The floor right above us is our second floor. Um, that is home to the Office of the President, as well as marketing, um, our online department, and a few other departments are right upstairs, as well as we have a really cool wall up there to show you just kind of the progress of Maryville over the years. And then we'll actually end our tour the floor below us, um, which is Gander Dining Hall, and so we'll see that on the other side of the tour. Um, but if you guys are ready to get started, we're gonna head right out the door, and we're gonna get started on the tour. So we are in our Gander Circle Drive right now. Um, and so we are headed down the hill, just right over here to Saints Hall. Um, and that is our first stop on the tour of our campus tour. And this is our newest residential hall. And so we're gonna head right down here. Um, you probably parked, if you're visiting campus, right here in the, the Circle Drive for all of our visitors. Um, this is where you would park if you'd like to come in and check in at the Solution Squad, if you have any questions for our Solution Squad, or you're here to meet with your admissions counselor. Yeah, so it is a little bit quiet on campus right now. It is spring break, um, so all of our students are traveling. They're coming on and off campus right now. Um, so we're excited over the next couple of weeks to have our students come back um, for, uh, to kind of make the campus a little bit more lively than it is right now. Um, so, but tours are in full swing. Um, we still happily give tours all the time, um, and we're so happy to have everybody visit campus. So just a few facts about Maryville. We are on 130 acres. We were founded in 1872. Um, the overall population of Maryville, our enrollment is just over 10,000 people. Um, so that being said, we only have about 3,000 undergraduate full-time students. And of those 3,000, we just have over 1,000 students that live on campus. Um, so like I said, we are headed to Saints Hall, one of our residential halls, and then we have two other residential halls for freshmen to live on, as well as we have five apartment complexes for um, sophomore, junior, senior, and transfer students to live on. So as we're getting closer here to Saints Hall, um, originally Saints Hall was just built the north side right over here, which was completed in 2015. Um, so as quickly after the north side was finished though, residential life, Maryville decided that we'd love to have more students on campus. So we immediately started construction on the east side right over here, which was completed in 2018. So if you're keeping track, the north side is just five years old and the east side is just now two years old. Um, and so it's still a brand new building. It is our newest residential hall on campus currently. All right, welcome to the beautiful Saints Hall. Um, so we are in the main lobby right here on the second floor of Saints Hall. So that being said, you notice that the front door and the back door, which is right over here on the first floor, um, remains unlocked. We just walked, strolled right in today. So it does remain unlocked from about 8 a.m. to 10 p.m. But that being said, all of our um, wings that you'll see, all of our stairwells and our elevators that we'll walk by, they're all secure. And so you must be a resident of this facility to be able to get into those residential areas. Um, but it is really nice that the front door and the back door do remain unlocked. So um, students, commuter students, residential students, they can all come in um, and take, take part in this beautiful area that we're here in, in the main lobby right now. Um, so like I said, we are on the second floor lobby. Every floor of this four floor building has a lobby just like this in the center. Um, the only difference is it just features a different entertainment center. Um, so right here we have the pool table. Um, on the third floor, which is the floor directly above us, we have ping pong. And then the fourth floor is foosball. 
The floor right below us, which we'll see here in a little bit, um, features our 24-hour fitness center as well as our laundry facilities. So like I said, this um, Saints Hall is home to just over 430 students. We have 99 ADA beds in here. Um, that being said, the room that we're going to show you, the showroom today, is an ADA, which is the American Disability Act room. And so I'll point out the differences between an ADA room and a non-ADA room, just so you know the differences um, whenever you're inside the room. Um, but other than that, we like to say all of our rooms here in Saints are cookie cutter. Um, that being said, um, if you live on the fourth floor north side or the second floor east side, there's going to be no difference in your room. So if it's a non-ADA room on the fourth floor, it's going to be the exact same as a non-ADA room on the second floor, which is really convenient. You don't have to worry about, you know, luck of the draw or anything like that. So it's a really great environment to live in. All of our residential halls are co-ed. Um, that being said, we are in a suite style residential hall now, so you'll get to see that here in a second. It's two people to one room, bathroom, two people on the other side. Um, everybody in that pod will be the same gender, but the people across the hall, on the other side of the wall, they might be the opposite gender. Um, and we also say that our residential halls are non-specific in the, in the sense that um, it's not like this wing over here is an athletic lacrosse wing or anything like that. Um, we create communities of all different um, athletic sports, genders, everything like that to just build a different community here on campus, which is a lot of fun. Um, so if you're ready to go, we are going to go right down here uh, and we're going to go check out our showroom. As we're making our way to the showroom, a few things to point out um, is that we do have one professional staff member that lives in each one of our residential halls. Um, so we do have one that lives in here, as well as during normal business hours, so that's 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, we do have, hello Stephanie, we do have um, one per, or an RA that works the desk, a residential assistant that works the desk. After 5 p.m., uh, we have an on-duty phone, which is really nice for all of our residents that you don't have to go to your RA's door and knock and hope that they're there if you're locked out or something like that. If you're having a problem, you just call the duty phone. Um, someone will always be there. Someone will always be able to take care of you, which is really convenient. Um, like I said before, the front door and the back door do remain unlocked, but this door is obviously locked, um, and so you do have to be a resident of this wing to be able to get into this wing. So now we're going to take a look at our showroom. All right, welcome to our Saint showroom. This is actually my room. I'm just kidding. I wish my room was this clean. Um, that being said, we are in an ADA room like I mentioned before. Um, so something that I am going to point out is the difference between an ADA room and a non-ADA room. Um, so if we kind of just rotate right over this way, um, you'll notice the wall comes onto the carpet. In a non-ADA room, this wall would actually end where the carpet and the tile change right there. Um, so what's happening is, we'll see in the bathroom here in a second, is there'll actually be less bathroom space, more living space. Um, so in our non-ADA rooms, um, the bathrooms just have a toilet and a shower. We keep the sinks on the outsides of our bathrooms, and that's just to minimize foot traffic that's happening in that bathroom. So you think about it, you're sharing that bathroom with two other people right on the other side. Um, you don't necessarily want somebody um, in the bathroom using the sink for 45 minutes in the morning um, when you're trying to take a shower. So it is nice that we have that, our sh sorry, sinks on both sides, um, which is really convenient. The other thing is, is that we have our closets on just on the other sides of the sink, which you'll see here in a second, right over there. Um, the racks will actually be a little bit higher um, than they normally are, are, that they are right now. And that is um, due to the fact that we're in an ADA room. So those racks will be a little bit higher as well. There are one closet for each person in this room, which is really nice. So you're probably asking yourself, what do you get whenever you come and move into your, your saints room? Um, you do not get this lovely duvet that we're showing right here. Um, this is the showrooms for them to keep. But you will get the mattress, the bed frame, um, the large dresser, the small dresser, the desk, and the chair, um, which you'll all see here in a second. Um, so that is really nice that all of those come very standard. Um, a couple things that you can do is for our beds right here, you can actually have a few different options. So you can actually loft this um, and you can make it higher and you can put a couch under here, you can put a fridge under here, um, whatever you like. Um, you could actually bunk them as well. So there are two beds in here. Um, so you could bunk the beds if your roommate agrees to that, make sure that they, um, they're okay with that. You could bunk those, have a little living section on the other side, um, you know, a little fridge, anything like that if you like. 
or if you're kind of short like I am, you can always lower the bed as well, and then that way you don't have to run and jump into your bed. So those are all the different options that we have with our beds that are really nice. All of our rooms here in Saints also come with um, a couple different amenities that are really nice. Um, so all of our rooms are equipped with cable TV. So we offer about 70 different free channels if you bring your own TV to campus with you. Um, the cable is already in here. You just got to attach it to your TV. That TV guide is available online as well as for print. Um, whenever you move in, you'll be able to get that TV guide. So definitely check out our different TV channels that we offer. Um, that's really nice as well. All of our rooms do come with their own Wi-Fi router as well. You're allowed to have five different devices on your account, which is really nice. One of those devices, um, if you're an undergraduate freshman, will be um, your iPad. And so all of our students do receive an iPad um, when they come to campus here as an undergraduate freshman. And that's a gift from the university to you to keep. Um, so upon graduation, that is yours to keep. Um, you are good to go with that, which is really nice as well. The other thing to point out is the thermostats right here on the wall. Um, that's not like some other thermostats where you know you can only bump it up one degree or down one degree and it's controlled by the university or anything like that. Um, we have several other pack leaders and tour guides that like to keep their room at 67 degrees in air conditioning all year long and that is perfectly acceptable. If you want to keep it at 67 in air conditioning all year long, you can do that. If you're more like me and you want to keep it at like 72 and switch it to heat and air conditioning, you can do that as well, which is really convenient as well. Um, so that, other than that, um, there's a few things that you can't bring to your room here at Saints Hall. So you're allowed to bring almost anything, um, refrigerator, microwave, that's perfectly fine. But anything that's an open heat source, you are not allowed to bring to our, any of our residence halls. So open heat sources include like a coffee pot that actually has a burner. That's not allowed. Panini presses, George Foreman grills, leave those at home. We don't want those, but we're more than welcome um, to bring your refrigerators, microwaves, anything like that to make this your new home, um, which is really nice. Um, so we are going to go check out the bathroom, so make sure you take a look at the closets. Remember that the racks um, will be a little bit higher. I always say they're high enough to where I put my large dresser in my closet and I still have room um, to hang my full-length jeans. So that's, that's how, kind of if that gives you a little bit of perspective. Um, and then we'll go through the bathroom to show you that. Um, and then I'll make sure to point out again the difference between this bathroom um, and a non-ADA bathroom. So let's head this way. So yeah, we are in our bathroom right now. Um, so the difference is, remember, there is no sink in our non-ADA bathroom. So right here where this sink is, is where the shower would be. Very similar shower setup, um, a little bit different, but like I said, the shower will be right here, the toilet will be right here. Um, and so where this wall is right here, it would just go all the way across and it would give more living space in both sides of the room. So you'd actually have quite a, quite a bit more living space on both sides of the room while still having a um, very nice sized bathroom for you to you know take care of getting ready in the morning and everything like that. So where is the sink in a regular bathroom? So in a non-ADA room, the sinks are on the outside. Um, like we saw, it's the same as in this room. So this has double or actually triple sinks because there's one on both sides on the outside and then one in here. Um, and this is just a roll under sink. Um, so it's an ADA accessible sink. So if somewhere's, someone's wheelchair bound, something like that, they can roll under this and still be able to utilize this sink, which is really nice. Um, so we're going to go through the other side. You're going to see a little bit more of a standard room, um, like whenever you move in. Um, and just that way you know that I'm not lying to you about anything that you receive on this side over here. So just take a look over here as we head out to the lobby. So yeah, we are in our wing of, so if, this is the second floor east side wing of Saints Hall. And so we're headed down to our middle lobby. Um, so you saw our main lobby whenever you walk in the main door, um, but now we're also going to show you kind of what a, in, like a middle wing looks like inside of your residential wing. And so this is really nice for a couple different reasons. So right here, um, we have just kind of a nice high top with built-in chargers. Um, we always say it's really nice for all of our students because, you know, you have that iPad. Um, and I don't know about you, I was at a high school where we also had a one-to-one -one initiative with iPads and my iPad just sat in my book bag. And that's not going to happen here at Maryville. You're going to be utilizing that iPad all the time. Um, professors, faculty, they all utilize those iPads really well. Um, it is really nice to see how we use technology here on Maryville, which I really appreciate. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of built-in chargers to all of our furniture. Um, we also have a lot of TVs in all of our areas. Um, so I like to point out that in here, we also have um, Apple TVs on all of our public TVs, which is really nice. Um, so if you're not very familiar with an iPad, if you have your iPad, 
two clicks on your iPad and whatever is on the screen of your iPad is now up on this TV, which is really nice because if you think about it, um, you, know, you know, me and a few friends, you know, we have marketing tomorrow, one of our marketing classes tomorrow, and we're like, oh, we have a big presentation coming up. So we're like, well, we're a little nervous about our presentation. So we just come into one of these wings, we hook it up right here, and now we can practice presenting like it would be in our classroom, which is really nice. The other really nice thing about this is every one of these wings has these um, middle wing areas. Um, these, you know, this high top table and the couch side, which we'll see on the other side. So that's really nice that usually these aren't too congested. They're not too busy just because, you know, we have a lot of options to where um, everyone has it. Um, and so it's not too much competition to, to be in this space, as you can see right now. Um, but yeah, we're going to head over to the other side. This is more like the study side I refer to. The other side is more like the lounge side, which is really nice as well. So we're going to head right over here. So we are just on the other side of where we were. Um, so this is more of the lounge area in the middle of your residential wing here in St. Saul. So as you can tell, a lot of couches, um, the nice beanbag sack that we have right here, which is a lot of fun for a lot of students. Another TV. Um, so this has a Netflix account on it. You know, it has the cable TV. It has the HDMI cable. So if you want to hook up to it, more than welcome to do that as well. It's a great space to just kind of hang out and relax, different stuff like that. Um, that being said, we do have two residential assistants for each one of the wings um, in Saints Hall. Um, so that's really nice. We have one residential assistant in the middle of the hall and one at the end of the hallway. Um, they're required to do floor events is what they're called. And so that's a great time for you to just build community. Um, they host all kinds of different events from like um, pancakes with peers. Um, so where they're making pancakes and you get to have a good time, eat some pancakes. Or I went to one um, last year, which was how to survive an alien invasion. So they talked about how you would survive an alien invasion um, if it hit Maryville. So they can be a lot of fun, uh, which is really exciting. But really, it's just for you to build community. Um, so a lot of your different uh, people on your floor is going to come down to those events, as well as you're more than welcome to invite, you know, commuter students, people that live in other residential halls um, to come hang out with your RAs and just kind of bond and have a great time, which is a lot of fun. Um, so we are going to head down now to the end of the hallway. Um, where we're going to see our new athletic complex. While we're going that way, can you tell us a little bit about what the RAs uh, do? What's your job? Yeah. So our RA is short for residential assistant, um, first off. And so their job is just kind of to maintain their area. So like I said, there's two residential assistants um, for each floor. Um, and so we have residential assistants that are also tour guides as well. So usually residential assistants are involved on campus. Um, as well as they're just in charge of maintaining their space and community that they build here on campus. Um, so they're making sure everybody in their environment is safe. Um, they're making sure that um, they're building a great community um, that, you know, that they can help in any way possible, as well as they're just a great friend, another student to have here on campus. So they're going to ensure your safety, make sure that everything's going well um, and everything like that, as well as just be a great resource as another student here on campus. So yeah, that's basically what a residential assistant does. They do a lot of different things. They have a lot of responsibilities. Um, like I mentioned, um, we have the duty phone. That is ran by residential assistants. Um, so they're, they're the ones that will always answer the duty phone for you if you ever call, um, which is really nice as well. So here we are at the end of the wing here in 2 East. And the one difference between the new wing, what I refer to as the east side, and the old wing, which is the north side, which neither wing is really that old if you think about it. Um, um, but the difference is, is at the end of the, all of the east wings, there is another lobby area down here. So there is another couch TV down here. Um, in the north wing, there is this same layout down here. There's just no couches or TVs or anything down here like that. Um, so that's the only difference between um, the east wing and the north wing. But now that we're down here, we're going to actually look over out these windows and we're going to see our brand new athletic complex. So that was actually completed just this year um, in 2020, which is really exciting. Um, one of the first big expansions of Maryville, um, it's definitely since I've been here. And so right on the right side, we have four tennis courts. Um, and then right straight ahead, we have our new softball field. And the left side is one of our lacrosse fields. And so that building right there is our new athletic complex building, which features locker rooms, concession stands, you know, um, conference rooms for um, our players to watch, you know, film, different stuff like that, as well as a lot of the coaches and athletic trainers have areas to work down there as well. So that's a great new expansion. 
uh, to Maryville that we're super excited about. Um, we're excited to see the changes and developments to Maryville. Um, so that brings up a good point. On tour, whenever we're talking about different construction or renovation projects, that's all based off of what's been released online. Um, so if you Google, I always recommend everybody Google Maryville University Future Projects, and you can see all the projects that we've done in the past, we're currently working on, or what's planned to be done in the future, which is really exciting. You can see like um, what it's supposed to look like, you know, estimated times that it's going to start, what, it, what they're going to do, and different stuff like that. So if you're kind of wondering, you know, is Maryville stagnant? Are we just happy with where we are? Yes, we're happy with our facilities. We're happy with our campus, um, but we're always growing. We're always pushing um, to innovate and kind of just push to the next level. And so that's something that you'll be able to see when you look that up online, which is really exciting. Um, so we are going to head back down the wing, um, and then we're going to head downstairs so you can see our laundry room and our fitness center. A lot of our residential, residential halls do feature fitness centers, which is really nice. Um, so you don't have to go all the way across campus or to the middle of campus to one of our fitness centers. So we're going to head down the hallway now. So we've been on the second floor of Saints Hall. And so now we're actually headed down to the first floor. Um, this is where I say the back door is. Um, and the back door leads to our parking lot here um, on campus, our right, for, right back here for all of our Saints residents. Um, our parking lots are really nice. If you're a Saints resident, you can park in our Saints parking lot. If you're a commuter student, you can park back there as well, um, which is really nice. Wait, uh, how much does parking cost? Parking is free on campus. We do ask, public safety does ask, that you go ahead and still get a permit from them for a couple of reasons. We are not in the business of making money off of parking tickets, um, but we are in the business of being um, you know, convenient and gracious and nice to our students. Um, so for example, my first year here, um, I had a parking permit, obviously, um, for my car that I brought to campus. And so I left my lights on in the Saints parking lot. I received a phone call. Um, it was one of our public safety officers, Joe. He said, hey, Blake, I ran your permit number. Looks like your lights are on in the Saints parking lot. You might want to check that out. Obviously, very grateful. Um, they're very great people. Uh, easy to work with, um, easy to get along with. They're a lot of great people. So right over here is our fitness center. Um, so this is our 24-7 fitness center for Saints Hall, um, which is really nice for all of our residents um, for a couple different reasons. It's obviously really nice equipment in here um, for you to take a part of, um, as well as it's available by key card to our Saints residents. Um, another really nice thing about this facility is that it can't be reserved for team workouts. So, you know, obviously I'm in great shape, as you can tell, on walking tours. Um, so I live on the third floor. Um, I don't have to worry about coming from the third floor down here and being like, oh, here's the whole baseball team working out in the fitness center uh, and have to worry about, you know, interfering with all the equipment being taken, everything like that. That being said, uh, if you are a baseball player, a wrestler, an athlete, anything like that, you're more than welcome to use this facility as much as you would like. It just means that your coach can't be like, hey, team workout in um, Saints Hall 124, um, which is nice to know that you don't have to compete with um, everybody else. So it's just Saints residents. All right, we are in our Saints Hall laundry room. Um, so right behind me is our 12 washers and 12 dryers. There are um, six washers and six dryers just on the other side of this wall. Um, so this is our one laundry facility for all of our Saints Hall residents, which is really nice. It's right here located on the first floor. Um, so you know, we have, you just have to come down from wherever you're living right down here um, to our laundry facility. Um, so a couple of nice things about our laundry facilities um, here on campus is one, um, thanks to your one fee, all of our laundry facilities are free for students. Um, so no more saving quarters, no more asking parents to send quarters in the mail or anything like that to use our um, to use our laundry facilities, they're completely free. Um, so that being said, if you want to do your laundry five times a day or five times a year, completely up to you. Um, do your laundry as much as you wish. Um, that being said, we also have another uh, couple of really nice things about our laundry facility, and it's probably why this um, area is one of my favorite places on tour, is that all of our laundry facilities, washers and dryers, are hooked up to the internet. Um, and so what that means is we have our Laundry View app as well as you can go onto the web browser. And so if you're like me and you live on the third floor um, and you're like most college students and you're like, oh gosh, I have a lot of laundry that I need to take care of, um, then you can quickly just check online and be like, what washers and dryers are available? Which dryers are in use? Which washers are in use? And it will tell you, washer one, washer three are available. Um, and then you can come down here, put your laundry in there, you can start them and you have two options. You can go onto the app and keep checking how much time is left on your um, washer dryer, or you can just turn on the notifications and it'll text you and it'll be like, hey Blake, uh, washer one is done, feel free to move it over to the dryer, which is really convenient. Um, the only thing it won't do for you right now is fold your laundry, which I'm still working on getting that worked out. 
Um, but yeah, really nice facility down here. Um, always take advantage of our, all of our nice amenities on campus. Maybe make sure to have a little refresher course on how to do your laundry before you get here. Um, but other than that, uh, this is our laundry facility. Um, and that wraps up our part of Saints Hall. So we are going to head back upstairs and we're gonna head to our next location. So we are getting ready to head to Walker Hall. Um, and that is one of our, it's our health professions building, but also just one of our academic spaces. Um, so we'll head that way um, and we will check that, uh, check that out. So as we are exiting Saints Hall, um, right over here in this flat patch that we can see right over here is not where they're going to let me host my local mud runs as much as I wish they would. Um, this is our location for our new Saints Fieldhouse. Um, so as I mentioned before in the tour, um, you can check out the, what those pictures and those renderings will look like online at, um, if you just Google Maryville University Future Projects um, and look at the Saints Fieldhouse. Um, there's going to be another basketball gym in there. There's going to be concession stands, locker rooms for all of our sports that take place right over here. Um, and so this is our new soccer, or this is our current soccer field as well as this is our new track and our new seating area right over here. Um, that is new since I've been here as a student. So we've added the track um, and we've added this nice new um, retaining wall and the seating area all over there, um, which used to just be a hill. So that's a nice addition that we have to our athletics right here. Blake, I have a very little trivia question for you. How many parking spots are there on campus? Yeah, so we get asked this a lot. Uh, we have 2019 um, parking spots on campus. 57 of those are handicapped parking spots. Um, and so that includes our newly um, added um, athletic complex right over there. Um, and it includes all of our parking spaces that you see all around us on the rest of this tour. Um, as we're talking about parking, another nice amenity that we have on campus is our enterprise car, um, which is right here. So we have two enterprise cars on campus. And so that's really nice um, if you do come to school and you don't have a car or, um, you know, your car is in the shop for a nice oil change or anything like that, um, you can always take advantage of our Enterprise car, which is a nice rental system that we have on campus. So those cars stay on campus for any time that you need to utilize those, um, which is really nice. Another nice thing to point out is that everything in our campus is nicely closely located to each other. So as you see, as we're walking across on tour today, um, we're going to do our whole tour and there's only about a five to seven minute walk um, kind of everywhere we go. So it's not a really spread out campus. We're nice all right together. Um, and so the rest of our tour will actually be one big circle um, just all around right this way, um, all around the campus here. So we'll see a whole bunch of different things right around here. Just a few facts about Walker Hall. It is our health professions building. Another really nice amenity about Walker Hall, um, as well as just the rest of the Maryville campus, is we do a really great job here at Maryville of giving you a whole bunch of different options of learning. So if you're a person that likes to sit outside and work outside, um, when it's a little bit warmer, the umbrellas will go up. Um, we have plenty of seating outside. We have plenty of seating inside. Um, so we just have a whole bunch of different options for you to kind of learn um, from and kind of just experiment with your different learning environments, which is a lot of fun. All right, welcome to Walker Hall. So we are in Walker Hall right now, which like I mentioned before, completed in 2016, our newest academic space currently on campus, um, which will change here shortly as we're doing some construction for our new academic space on the opposite side, which you'll see on tour. Um, but like I said, this is mainly our health professions building. Um, so right over here on this side, uh, we have our music therapy, exercise science right over here. Um, if we go up a floor from this floor right here on that side is nursing, and then up one more floor is physical therapy. If we look at this wing right over here, it's rehabilitation counseling, as well as we have a speech language pathology clinic right here. We go up a floor, it's occupational therapy, and then the third floor is actually speech language pathology as well. Um, so the clinic is down here, but they're mainly on the third floor, which is also really cool upstairs. Um, so each wing features something different. Um, so the music therapy wing over here um, features a music therapy clinic um, where Maryville also hosts um, Kids Rock Cancer, which is a really cool program, nonprofit that we put together here at Maryville, um, working along with a couple different children's hospitals, um, different stuff like that. Right over here is our speech language pathology, which is actually open to the public. Um, so we have speech language pathologists as well as students that work in this clinic, uh, working with younger children um, and through speech language pathology classes. 
upstairs in our nursing suites, um, which all of these things you can see online um, on our 360 viewers, um, and then also through different uh, online web applications. You can see like what our nursing suite looks like um, in there. We have a maternity ward as well as a mock ER and a mock doctor's office. So that's really cool for our nursing um, staff and our faculty and our students to be able to utilize those. It has all the like robotic dummies and stuff that they can work with. I stay far away from there. I'm glad the nursing students work in there. Not really for me. Um, but also upstairs we have our physical therapy lab, which is our skills lab, um, which is a really cool um, classroom space where like they can sit in the middle and they can watch the presentation and interact with the presentation and then they can work hands on right to the side, which is a really cool option. Occupational therapy wing has their own full size apartment over there, which is really cool. So they um, occupational therapy students can work hands on with clients and like maneuvering them around an apartment kind of like they would in the real world. Um, so this building is really great about preparing you for the real world as well as your job after college, which is a lot of fun. Another great thing that Maryville does is that we um, make everything easy for the student to locate. We're very student-centered. Um, so right over here, all of our health profession staff is centrally located, and that's how it works for all of our, all of our wings as well as all of our majors. Um, so like the nursing suites, um, over in the nursing wing, um, all of our nursing faculty will be um, located in their nursing wing, which is really nice. So if you have a question for one of your nursing faculty members, they'll all be over there in that wing um, for the most part, as well as the same thing for occupational therapy, physical therapy, um, everything like that. On the second and third floor of this building, it is a three floor building. Um, it is not office suites in the middle like this. Like I said, they're in their wings, um, but we do have group study rooms on the second and third floor. And so there's three group study rooms on every floor. Um, and so all four of those walls are whiteboard walls, which is really cool. So you can literally write from floor to the ceiling with a whiteboard marker. Um, great for studying. I like to go in there before finals, a couple weeks before finals. And um, you'll see different students that have wrote, um, like written in 12 point font all the way across, which is really cool. Um, and then also um, in there, there's uh, portable TVs with Apple TVs, like I mentioned before. Um, so you can easily um, present from your iPad to the TVs, which is really nice as well. Just really great studying areas, um, as well as we have all the flexible furniture that you're going to see all around campus. So we have individual chairs with the chargers and kind of small desks, as well as we have booths upstairs, um, faculty student interaction areas. Um, so, you know, if you don't necessarily, faculty member doesn't necessarily want to meet like in their office or something like that, they can meet in kind of one of these flexible areas all around campus, which is a great option um, to kind of just improve your learning environment. Um, a few fun facts just about Maryville, as well as like just some statistics, is our average classroom size is actually 15 students, uh, 15 to 16 students. And it's a 15 to one student to faculty ratio, um, which is a nice size. Um, the teachers and professors get to know you really well, as well as you get to have a lot of interactions with your professors and your other students. It builds for a great community. Um, other than that, um, we do have a medium-sized kind of auditorium right behind this wall over here. It seats 90, um, but like I said, you know, our average classroom size is about 15 to 16. Also, in all of our suites, we have um, some what I call generic classrooms. Um, so like I said, this is the health professions building, but that does not mean um, someone like me who's not a health professions major isn't going to be able to utilize this building. So I'm a cybersecurity major, um, and right down on this wing over here, I took a class called National Security and Terrorism, and then right down here on this wing right over here, I took a class called, um, which was Financial Accounting. So me being a business major, I got the opportunity to take classes in this space as well, um, which is really great um, for all, all the different majors and students to be able to utilize this brand new building. So yes, it is a health professions building building because it has those nice health professions features, but it's also a building that all of our students can use. Um, so out now we are going to actually head to our next location, which is Mouton Hall. So we're going to head right down this way. All right, we are headed to Mouton Hall, um, which is right over here to my left. Um, it is our oldest residential hall on campus, um, but I would argue with most people that it's our most loved residential hall. Um, we have a lot of students that really just love Mouton Hall. It holds only 150 students, so it is our smaller residential hall. Um, so 
It's, it's the smallest uh, residential hall out of our three residential halls. It's also our community style residential hall. Um, so that being said, it's a little bit different than Saints Hall, which is a suite style um, to where here it is still co-ed um, and it's non-specific, like I said before. So that means um, males and females will be on every floor. Um, it's not specific by athlete or anything like that. Um, but for Mouton, it will be separated by wings. So it will be men on one wing um, with their bathrooms in the middle and then their stalled showers at the end. Um, so it's not like one big shower room or anything like that. It is stalled showers. And then on the right side is women's with the exact same thing. It is lobby in the middle that separate them and they have a laundry floor on every floor. Um, so we're going to head into Mouton so you can kind of see what that looks like. It is probably our most convenient location. It is right here in the main circle, um, right across from a few things. It is our only residential hall that does not have a fitness center inside of it. And that's because you're gonna see after we finish our tour here in Mouton, um, that is actually, it's like 70 steps away from our, fit, our main fitness center here on campus. So here is our Mouton lobby. Um, so it's kind of similar um, to the Saints lobby, the main lobby in the middle. Um, so it's, this is the main lobby in the middle that separates um, the girls or the women's side from the male side, um, which is over here. And so like I said, once again, um, the bathrooms are in the middle of the wing and then the stall showers are at the end of the wing. Um, something nice to point out is that all the bathrooms and showers are cleaned by our professional faculty, our, our professional staff here. Um, so that's a little bit different um, than our Saints Hall rooms, which you as a student would have to clean your own bathroom as well as your own room. Um, so that's the, the main difference between um, the community style and the Saints Hall residence as well. So um, like I said, lobby on every floor. Um, so this one has the ping pong table. The floor above us has the pool table. Still has the um, TV, the couches, hangout area, um, which is really great. This residential hall, each floor only has one residential assistant. So like I said, only about 150 students live here. Um, so it's about the same ratio of residential assistant to student. So we're going to head right around the corner. Um, and there's laundry facilities on every floor. So we're going to see that right here, right around the corner. So yeah, laundry facility, definitely a little bit different um, than our Saints Hall um, laundry facility. Um, since there is one on every floor, there's just two washers and two dryers on every floor. Um, still a nice setup as far as it's being free, um, everything like that. Um, it's just a little bit fewer washers and dryers um, and then there are on every floor, which is really nice. Um, on three of the four floors of Mouton, we actually have um, residents living on them. On the bottom floor, there is a full kitchen down there, as well as one of our counseling offices is down there as well. So that wraps up a Mouton Hall. So we're actually going to head back downstairs and out, and we're going to head over to our fitness center. So like I said before, Mouton Hall is nicely located right here in the middle of campus and it's right next to our fitness center. So how Saints Hall and Powder Hall, which we'll see here in a little bit, um, has fitness centers inside of them, um, this Mouton Hall does not have a fitness center inside of it because it is right next to our main fitness center here on campus. So the fitness center right here is attached to the Simon Center, um, which is our main gym area. A lot of our coaches offices um, are in there. That is due to be renovated as well. That is on the website um, for future projects that are going to be done. Um, so that is exciting as well to kind of see how this is going to change over time um, to kind of accommodate more people as well as just kind of a fresh facelift for everything. All right, so we are in our main fitness center here um, in the Simon Center. Um, there's a lot happening in here, in here, a lot of different things happening here. We obviously have all the different equipment. Um, this can be used for teams to work out in. Um, there's also another heavy weights gym right around the corner that we'll see um, that's nice for our athletes and students to utilize. Um, all of the equipment up against the wall, it has a lovely view outside um, as well as it, all of those pieces of equipment, sorry, are hooked up to cable TV as well as you can have it if you would like um, to make it feel like you're running on the beach or you're sledding or something like that. I don't know why you'd ever want to put yourself through that, um, but those options are right there. All of this equipment right here is for you to utilize as well. 
Um, if you are like me, and you probably don't even know how to sit on some of this equipment, um, what's really nice about all of our equipment is they have QR codes on them, which you can kind of see right over here. Um, and so that is really convenient for the fact that I can easily just take my phone and I can scan the QR code and it's going to tell me exactly how to sit on this piece of equipment. It's going to tell me exactly how to use this piece of equipment and it's going to give me some example workouts um, as well as kind of what areas of my body that I'm actually um, working out on this equipment, which is really nice. So if you're like me um, and not very uh, well versed in the whole fitness center area, more than welcome um, to use this facility as well, as well as our other facilities. Use those QR codes, which is really convenient. So we're going to head right around the corner. Hey, yeah. What are the hours of this facility? Yeah, so the hours, it is available to students 24-7. Um, so it's always available. You would have to key card in afterwards, um, which, is, which is nice. But for the most part, we also do have um, a, sorry, a work study position um, who manages the desk in here, um, which would you know take care of all the equipment, kind of manage the area um, as well, which is a nice, which is nice. Um, during the day, um, we also have a lot of faculty staff that take part um, in our fitness center here, which um, you're more than welcome to take a part of, um, which is really nice as well. So, so we have all different types of people utilizing this fitness center. Um, so yeah, we're gonna head right around the corner now. So we are in the back side of Simon right now. Um, what I have right to my right is one of our um, multi-purpose rooms right behind me. Um, and so what's great about this is we do offer a spring and fall schedule, um, and that includes yoga, Maryville Gets Fit, Pound, Zumba, different stuff like that. Those are all free classes that are offered by our faculty and staff here um, for our students to take part in. Um, you don't have to be, you don't have to register for the classes, you don't have to, um, you know, enroll in the class or anything like that. They're just extra classes for you to take part in um, if you would like to for a little bit of uh, extra exercise. If you're like me and you probably would never run six miles on the treadmill, um, maybe I'd be more inclined to maybe try to Zoom or a Get Fit class, which is a really great option here as well. If class is not being taken place um, in here, you're more than welcome to use any of the equipment in here. There's a stereo system in here, everything like that, um, to take part in that, which is really nice. So it's a nice extra multi-purpose room as well. Um, for homecoming, one of our larger events, a lot of our teams that are competing in homecoming, they'll use this to practice uh, their different skits, um, their different lip sync battle routines, different stuff like that. So it's a great multi-purpose room. We're actually gonna head into our main gym now, which is in the Simon Center. All right, so we are in our main gym here um, in the Simon Center. And so this is really great. This is where all of our home basketball games, home volleyball games, wrestling matches, they all take place right in here. Um, and so it's a beautiful area. Um, one thing that we do like to mention is we also have a pep band um, here at Maryville. So if you play an instrument, you are in the marching band, anything like that, feel free um, to contact your admissions counselor about joining the pep band. It's another great opportunity for you to get involved here on campus, which is a lot of fun. That being said, um, if you are not being recruited to Maryville um, to be a collegiate athlete, but you still love the game, um, there's plenty of options for you here. Um, so we have two other options. We have club sports, which is the next level down in competition, and then we have intramural sports. Um, so club sports, you're gonna travel around quite a bit. You're gonna be a part of a club team. You're gonna be competitive. Um, that's a lot of fun. Um, but then if you're like me and you just wanna have um, play a good game of basketball, a little pickup game of basketball, something like that, um, you can always take part in one of our intramural teams, which is gonna play other teams here on campus. Um, so for example, our actuarial science um, department, they have an intramural team, our sports business, um, department. They have an intramural team and so those students um, face head-to-head -head all the time um, playing basketball and so we offer a whole bunch of different intramural sports, a whole bunch of different club sports. Um, so if you want to still stay in the game there's plenty of opportunities for you to get involved here at Maryville. As far as collegiate wise we are NCAA Division II. We're part of the Great Lakes Valley Conference. Um, so we have that is where we are ranked. Um, also not only do we have this facility here and all of our other um, kind of athletic spaces on campus, we also do have our brand new ice hockey arena, um, which is right on down by the premium outlet malls if you're right over there in that area. 
That's a beautiful new um, two rink ice hockey arena, um, which is beautiful um, that Maryville has taken part in. Um, and so that's a lot of fun if you want to go um, watch our hockey team. Um, we have a new women's hockey team um, coming out next year. So that's exciting to uh, take part in that and kind of um, see them um, compete, which will be a lot of fun. Um, as well as uh, another one of our uh, organizations, our sports that is doing really well right now is our eSports. And so they have a nice facility on campus here as well. Um, and so they have their banners um, hanging over there from their championships recently. Um, and so that's a lot of fun as well. So if you're part of eSports, we have a great eSports team here at Maryville as well. Um, but other than that, this is our facility. Uh, and so right now, you know, it is spring break. So it's a little, a little quiet in here. Um, but then also right over here um, to my right, we have our heavyweights gym, um, which we're going to go take a look at now. All right, we are on the back side of Simon right now. Um, so we are in our, what I refer to as our heavyweights gym. Um, so all of our bars, uh, dumbbells, kind of heavier weights all take place in here. Um, so a lot of our sports team utilize this as well as all of our students can utilize this as well. Um, so great view. We have a great view over our baseball field right over here. Um, and so other than that, more than welcome to utilize this facility. We are going to head to our next location. All right, now we are headed to our next, um, our third and final residential hall, which is Potter Hall. Um, so we're going to take a nice little walk out to Potter Hall. That is our farthest walk to a residential hall, um, but it's still only about two, three minutes um, from right here, which is our Donius University Center, um, which is where we'll go right after Potter Hall. So we're going to head right out there. Just as we're crossing right by here, um, we do have our blue light system all across campus, uh, which is really convenient. Um, so those are not just located at our residential facilities, those are located all across campus. Um, so our public safety does a really great job with safety, um, as well as just general concerns of the students. Um, and so you have a couple different options uh, when working with public safety. Um, if there's something happening and you need to push the blue light button, always push the blue light button. Um, but as well as like if you're just walking from Potter back to, the, back to your residential hall or from Simon to Potter, anything like that, um, feel free to give our public safety a call if it's late at night. Um, they're always more than welcome to walk you back to your residential hall, anything like that. Um, so we are really student-centered, student-focused here at Maryville. Um, and so that's just another way that we show our safety um, and our concern for safety for our students here at Maryville. Yeah, as you can see over to my left, um, the parking lot's a little empty right now. Um, and like I said before, that is because of spring break. And so when we're in full swing of things, um, that will not be the case. And so we're always excited to have our students back on campus. Um, but yes, as a freshman, as any year, you're more than welcome to bring a car to campus. Um, but like I said before, public safety does ask that you go ahead and get a permit for that car, just so they can help you out if something ever happens. Yeah, you do not have to live on campus um, as a freshman. Um, you don't have to live on campus any of your years um, that you're here at Maryville. So we have a large commuter population. So about 2,000 of our students um, commute every day to Maryville. Um, and so, you know, that is completely up to you. So if you're living nearby um, and you're coming out of high school and you would like to commute every day, feel free to commute every day. Um, but if you want to take part and live on our campus um, and one of our beautiful residential halls, you're more than welcome to do that as well. But going off of that, um, one of the another, another options you're going to be able to see is our apartment complexes. And so that is really nice um, for a couple of reasons. You cannot live in an apartment complex as a freshman, um, but you can as a transfer um, student or a sophomore, junior, or senior. Um, and so a couple of nice things about that is that it just gives you um, the luxury of kind of having a little bit more freedom as if you're off campus, but have all the perks of living on campus. Um, so that's another um, great reason to live um, on campus, um, be a part of our residential life system, which is a lot of fun. All right, so we are getting closer to Potter Hall. We're gonna head into uh, the main lobby of Potter Hall. Potter Hall is a little bit different um, than Saints Hall where every room is not exactly the same. Um, so you're gonna have a few different features in all of your rooms. Um, as you can tell, some of our rooms over here have balconies. Um, so that's one of your options as a student here. Um, usually it's kind of, um, for freshman students, it's usually a little, bit, a little bit of luck of the draw. So we place you as a freshman student in housing. Um, but another great thing as coming in as a freshman is that you get priority to housing. So Residential Life wants to make sure um, that we get you housed um, and make sure you have a great experience living on campus. Um, and so you get priority to housing, which is really nice.
Another question that we often get as tour guides is, are we allowed to have bikes on campus? How about skateboards, everything like that? You're more than welcome to have your bikes, skateboards, anything like that on campus. Um, we don't have very far walks to anything, um, so a bike ride might be really quick, but if you enjoy exercising um, by your bike or you just enjoy a nice ride every once in a while, feel free to bring your bike or skateboard to campus. And here we are, we've made it to Potter Hall. Um, so Potter Hall, like I said before, is our third residential facility on our tour um, and our last residential facility on tour. Um, but that being said, um, the best way to explain Potter Hall is it used to be an old Marriott courtyard. Um, and then Maryville purchased um, the, Maryville, or, sorry, the Marriott courtyard um, from Marriott and now we have turned it into one of our residential um, buildings. Um, so it's very much similar to Saints, which the front door is unlocked. Um, we do have a professional staff that works right behind the desk, as well as we have um, residential assistants that work the desk as well um, during normal um, business hours and like whenever we're not at spring break. And so um, that's really great if you have something um, that you need to get taken care of during the day that they're always there for you. But that being said, even though the front door is unlocked, all of the wings to all of our actual areas of living are secure. And you do have to be a resident of this building to be able to get in there. So I live in Saints. I do not have access um, to any of the Potter wings, um, which is kind of another way that we focus on security here on campus. But other than that, we have our main lobby right here. Um, it features our pool table. It features our TV. Uh, it features just a couple different seating options. We have a great patio out back, um, nice little courtyard out there, um, as well as we have great seating area all around here in the main lobby area, um, as well as a nice conference room over here. So sometimes you'll have different meetings or different stuff as a student here in our conference room over here. Um, so that's all is what takes place out here. Um, a lot of fun games out here as well. So always come take a visit out here to Potter Hall. A lot of great people out here. Um, always say hi to our residential life people, which is a lot of fun. Um, so now we are actually going to head back into campus. Um, if you're interested in seeing any of our residential rooms that we did not show, so Mouton Hall, like a room in Mouton Hall or a room in Potter Hall, those are available online. Um, and so you will be able to see that um, at maryville.edu forward slash virtual tour. Um, so that's one of the locations that you can see it or there'll be a few other options for you to see our rooms. Um, so we're going to head back out and we're going to head to our Donius University Center. Hey, I did hear there's a special bathroom situation Yes, um, so the living style here at Potter is a little bit different. Um, so it is, since it was a hotel, it is two people to a room with one bathroom. Um, so it's not community bathrooms like it was in Mouton, and it's not suite style like it was in Saints. It is two people to a room, one bathroom. You would have to clean your own bathroom. Um, but another nice thing that that features is that um, it's just two people to a room, which is really nice. But another thing to point out, though, is that in a hotel, there's no overhead lighting. So there's no overhead lighting in our rooms here at Potter either. So you need to bring your own lamps or string lights or something like that to make sure that you have um, lighting in your room or else your sleep schedule is going to quickly change to whenever the sun rises and the sun falls. And I promise no one's going to be happy about that. Also behind Potter Hall, um, we have the top floor of a parking garage back there for all of our residents and our commuter students to park back there as well. Um, so that's another one of our parking options here on campus. Um, so there's parking on all sides, um, as well as there's parking in the back. Talking about security and safety, um, in Saints Hall, all of our trash rooms are in the middle of the floor, on every floor. So you only have to take your trash as far as just that trash room right there in the middle of the floor, which is kind of um, convenient for students, as well as it's a safety concern. We don't want you to have to be walking all the way out um, to the end of the parking lot late at night or anything like that. Um, so that's really nice as well. And a lot of our um, facilities are set up just like that. Yeah, so you have a bunch of different options to get your caffeine um, fix here on Maryville. We take our coffee very seriously here as students. Um, so we obviously have our on-campus Starbucks. Um, we have our other dining facilities that offer coffee, but also if you want a little secret of Maryville is a lot of our residential facilities also have Keurigs, um, they have popcorn machines. Um, we're we're going to go to our Center for Student Engagement and they have um, coffee machines and popcorn machines in there as well. So if you're looking for maybe a nice cup of coffee for free, check out some of our residential facilities, facilities or our Center for Student Engagement. Um, so you're going to get to meet a lot of great people as well as you're going to get some free um, coffee and food.
So we are headed to our Donius University Center. Um, our Donius University Center has a lot of different features in it. We're going to stop in on LJ's first and we'll see LJ's and then we'll kind of go through um, and we'll see Louis and a few other different features of our Donius University Center. That's a great just general space um, right there. A lot of studying can take place there. Just a lot of different areas um, for you to get engaged and involved on campus. Um, something that we did mention before is sustainability and how important sustainability is to our campus. Um, and so you might have noticed in our residential halls um, that there is a lot of paper flyers on doors and different stuff like that. Um, if not, they are in residential facilities paper flyers. That's the only location on our campus that can have paper flyers. And that just goes with our sustainability um, values, and our core value of sustainability. Um, so everywhere else um, on our campus, you're going to see a lot of different marketing techniques, um, including you're going to see in our Donius University Center maybe some painted windows. Um, during the nicer times of the year, you're going to see sidewalk chalk, different stuff like that, as well as all of our TVs that we have all across campus are going to feature our digital signage. Um, and so that's just a few ways that we're a little bit more flexible um, in the area of marketing and different stuff like that for all of our students and our student programs, and we don't have to use all that paper. So we are in our Donius University Center. Um, so right over here to my left, um, we have a lot of just general seating area. Actually, it's set up right now on Fridays. Um, our eSports teams puts on a big um, Super Smash Bros tournament. Um, and so that's taking place here on Friday evenings um, for the public to take part of, as well as our students. Um, we're actually going to head over into LJ's right now and kind of show you what LJ's looks like here on campus. So we are at LJ's. This is our, what I like to refer to as our main quiet studying area. That's just a joke. I'm just kidding. Um, this is just kind of a general hangout area. A lot of studying does take place in here, um, but you know we have a bunch of different options in here. We do have 19 televisions in here. Um, you'll see them hanging all around. They can all be controlled um, by the tablet right over there on the wall that you'll see here in a second. And so that's a great feature for all of our students. So if you want to change the TVs to anything, um, you can change it to sports channels. You can change it to our digital signage. Um, you can change it to an Apple TV. So if you want to um, put something up on the TVs, you're more than welcome to. So this is a great flexible space. A lot of our medium size events happen in here. Um, so we have a lot of different student organizations and we'll see that in our Center for Student, Invo our student Engagement, sorry, right around the corner. We'll see all of our student involvement that we have. Um, but this is a great location for like, um, I'm a part of Connect, which is our committee on new and existing campus traditions. And so we host karaoke night in here. And so, you know, at the you know, first week that freshmen get here, we're gonna have karaoke night. And there's like 150, 200 students all packed in LJs and you know, just a whole lineup um, of students that want to hop on stage um, and sing um, for karaoke um, the whole night. So it's a two hour event, which is a lot of fun. Not only do we have all the TVs in here, which you can change the volume, you can change it to music, anything like that. We also have a bunch of games in here. So we have our hockey games, our foosballs, our Connect Four, our basketball game, our, our old Pac-Man um, multi-K game right over there, which is a lot of fun. Um, those are all free to our students. So definitely take advantage of those. If you're really good at Pac-Man, come start a Pac-Man tournament in here. Um, we'll see who's the best. Um, that's a lot of fun. Also, right around the corner, you're going to see we have one of our new um, dining hall options right around the corner. So you can bring that food over here. You can eat in our Downing Street University Center. You can eat in Louis. It's all completely up to you. Um, so this is a great flexible space um, right here, um, right on the side of the Downing Street University Center for all of our students to take part of, um, which is a lot of fun. We're going to now head um, into the back into the Downing Street University Center and over to Louis. So as we're coming in here, um, right in our main entryway of the Donnie's University Center is another great example of just how we're student-centered and student-focused here at Maryville's campus. Um, so this is one of our package pickups. Um, you'll see our mail center over in our end store right around the corner. Um, but this is a really great option for our uh, mailing center. They can put your mail in here. They can email you and be like, Here's your, um, here's your code, come pick up your mail, and that's available 24-7. So that's another great option that's just been added to our campus. Um, it's just a little bit easier for our students to pick up their mail. Um, so as we're going this way, um, you will see some of the windows are painted. Um, hopefully you can see that. Um, that's another way that we show our, um, you know, our flexibility in marketing, um, and then as well as our TVs will display all of our marketing as well.
So now, right now, we are in front of our brand new Louis, um, which is currently closed for spring break. Um, that is another great option for our students um, to get food while they're on campus here. Um, so Thursdays, it's also our great late night option. So on Thursdays, it's open till midnight. Fridays and Saturdays, it's open till 1 a.m. We know you as students are going to be up late on the weekend studying. So we wanted to make sure that we had a place on campus um, for you to grab some food. Um, so this is like our more like gourmet burger, um, milkshake type of um, restaurant for you to take part in. Um, and so that brings up the topic of how does our dining plan work here on Maryville? Well, currently it is dining dollars and it's not like swipes or anything like that that you might see at other universities. Um, so how it works here is that if you live on campus, you have three different dining options to choose from and they're just all different dollar amounts. And so whenever you select one of those, it's loaded onto your student ID as if it was a debit card. Um, so when you come into Louis and you meet some of our great staff working in Louis, you say, hey, I want a burger, I want a fr uh, fries and a chocolate milkshake. And they're like, all right, perfect, 650. Um, you scan your student ID and 650 comes off your student ID. And that's how it works at all of our locations on campus. So it's all what we call a la carte, um, which is a great option. It makes it a lot easier than just having to use swipes because you know if you want to go into Gander, our main dining hall, um, and just get an apple, you don't want to have to use a whole meal swipe on that. So that's a great option um, to do everything a la carte here. So yes, this is a great late night option. There are a lot of different food options here um, and a, just a fun space to hang out in as well. Um, so something new to our campus as well is we have our new Transact app. Um, so as a student here, um, all of our dining facilities now um, are on our mobile ordering app. So if you're running a little late to class or you just don't want to have to wait in line, you can hop on our app, you can order your burger, fries, and a milkshake, and then it'll automatically come off of your dining plan and it'll be ready to go right here whenever you come and pick it up. So you can just grab and go, um, which is another great option. So now we are going to head to our M store um, and we're going to check out our M store. All right, so we are in our M store. So right over here, everything with a Maryville logo is right, located right over here. Um, if you come on tour with us, um, you're gonna receive a coupon from our admissions department for the Maryville store. Um, so that's a great option um, right over here to use that coupon right over here. Um, all different kinds of uh, you know, clothing apparel, jackets, everything like that are right over here. Now located right over here is another one of our dining options. Um, so like I mentioned before, we have on-campus apartments. So this is a great option as uh, if you need to grab a quick and grab and go food, or if you, know, if you forgot something for your apartment or your residential hall, that's a great option um, for right over here. Everything over here can be used on your dining dollars as well, which is nice to note. Um, you know, you can't buy apparel with your dining dollars, um, but you can buy the different options over here with your dining dollars. Um, that includes everything from fresh fruits to, you know, um, you know, string cheese to chips, everything like that all come over here, which is a great option for you to use your dining dollars if you're looking to just grab something and go. Right behind me is our Maryville University Mailing Center. Um, this is a great secure mailing um, facility here on campus um, for a couple different reasons. It was two winter breaks ago um, that I ordered a laptop and I was working over winter break and so I didn't want the laptop to just sit on my front porch. Um, so this is a great option because you can actually have it sent here um, and then you can, they will hold it and they will secure it for you until you can come present your student ID and pick up your mail. Um, your mail. So if you're watching this video and you think, wow, Blake, you've done a great job on tour and you would like to send me a present or a gift, all you have to do is my first and last name and the Maryville University address. You don't have to know where I live on campus, anything like that. It will come here and then I will receive an email that says, hey, Blake, um, you received a package in the package center. I'll come present my student ID and I'm able to pick that up. A great option for all of our students here. You don't have to be a resident of um, Maryville to also use this. If you're a commuter student and you need something sent to the university, you can do that as well. Another great option that Maryville offers with their one fee is our um, textbooks. And so we are a digital first campus, um, which means if you're, what will happen about a month before um, your classes start, you'll receive an email that says, here's all the classes you're taking, here's all the textbooks that are required for that class. And if you're like me and you're like, uh, and you get rid of the email, um, what will happen is when it's time for classes to start, all those textbooks will be um, automatically uploaded to your iPad through our Red Shelf application, which is through our Canvas application, which is really great. So you have digital textbooks um, for the whole year. If you're like sub students and you're like, oh no, I can't learn with digital textbooks, you have the option to go in and choose those textbooks to be print at no extra charge. All of your textbooks are included in your one fee. Um, so you don't have to pay for your textbooks or go looking for your textbooks or anything like that. 
we as a university take care of that for you, um, which is a really nice option. As well as if you're in some of your classes, like an art class or something like that, where you're going to need clay or different supplies like that, that will all be included in your one fee as well, and it'll be shipped here, or you can have it shipped to your house if that's what you prefer, um, and then you're ready to go for your class. So it's not like you show up to your class your first day, you get the syllabus, and they're like all these required materials and all these different textbooks, and you have to go running around looking for that. We like to make it really easy for you, and we'll take care of that all for you right in here. Um, if you have any questions about our Red Shelf or our digital textbooks or our physical textbooks, this is a great resource right in, um, right in here at our M store to get that taken care of. Other than that, that wraps up the part of the M store. We are now going to head to our Center for Student Engagement right around the corner. Hey, Luis. How are you? Good, how are you? All right, we are in our Center for Student Engagement. This is where all student involvement takes place. This is kind of like our headquarters for student involvement. So our, up against the wall is all of our professional staff um, for our Center for Student Engagement. So if you have questions for like the Director of Student Involvement, anything like that, they'll all be taking place in here. In the middle, we have great study space for our students, um, great collaboration space for a lot of our organizations to hold meetings, as well as a lot of great event space in here as well. Um, as a little note, in the back of this area over here, um, we have free popcorn, free soda, free coffee, as well as we make fresh baked cookies every day at around 2 o'clock. So if you want to grab, um, come grab a fresh baked cookie, that takes place in the back as well. So that's a little, that's a little secret between um, me and you. Um, but other than that, we have a whole bunch of different um, options for you to get involved here at campus. We have over 120 organizations here on campus that host more than 3,000 events a year. Um, so there's tons of different options for you to get involved in um, and tons of different options to have a great time here at Maryville. Our student life is vibrant on this campus and we have a lot of fun here, um, especially as a student, you get to have a lot of fun as well. As well as, um, you know, I'm a cybersecurity major, but I've gotten involved in quite a few different organizations and I've learned a lot of great life skills that I wouldn't necessarily learn just by taking my cybersecurity classes. So I got to be an event planner this year for um, our family weekend, which was a lot of fun, got a lot of opportunities to kind of grow as a student leader as well, um, thanks to this area right here. When you do become a student, um, we make it really easy for you to find out what's happening on campus. So we have our brand new Quark app, um, which is right here, um, where we list all of our organization's um, events um, that are happening on campus. We list where they're located. We list if there's free giveaways. We list if we're um, you know, providing food, everything like that, as well as you can RSVP for those events online as well. Um, so if you're like me and you love your Starbucks, um, which you can use your dining dollars on, um, which we'll see right next, um, you, you know, you're kind of going to weed through your dining dollars kind of quickly. And so what I always do, start finding events that provide great food. You can have a lot of great meals here on campus for free if you just kind of um, expand and go to a few different events. Um, I've learned a whole bunch of different, um, just great information from different events from going to anything from like how to roll sushi um, to like great um, Hawaiian Asian Pacific Islander Association events. We have a bunch of different cultural organizations, religious organizations, um, sporting organizations, as well as traditional organizations here as well. If for some reason we do not have an organization that you're looking for here, it's very easy. You, three other students, and a faculty or staff member can create that organization here through our Center for Student Engagement, and then you could start receiving funding from Maryville to host that organization in their events, which is a lot of fun. So definitely take advantage of this space. It's a lot of fun. You're going to learn a lot of great skills here and definitely get involved while you're here at Maryville. Um, so now, yeah. Hey, is this space only for the student organizations, or can any student come and be here? Any student um, can come and utilize this space. Um, and so that's a really great point um, that was pointed out, is it's not just student organizations that are taking advantage of this space. We have students that are not involved, that are just um, general board members, um, that just attend events. They all can take play, or they can all come to this space and utilize it. It's a great study space as well as like a meeting space for student organizations as well. Um, so anybody can take advantage of this space. Anybody can definitely take advantage of the free food and the free drinks in the back as well um, that you should definitely take a part in. So we are going to head to Starbucks now. So we're headed down to our Starbucks, um, which is directly located right in front of our library. So this, we'll see our university library as well as our Starbucks. Um, Starbucks recently changed, so our Starbucks is pretty new here on campus. Uh, and that is a great location for you to get your caffeine fix here on campus. 
Also another great location um, just to kind of hang out um, and utilize our different spaces. Right around the corner here, um, Maryville University does have a freight farm, which is really cool to take advantage of and to take a look at. Um, that is just basically a semi-container um, that we grow a lot of our lettuce, um, different greens and stuff for our dining hall right in that freight farm, which is really cool. So we are in our university Starbucks. Um, this is a phenomenal area, I believe, on campus. Um, this is where I spend a majority of my time. Um, so something new to Maryville is now you can use your mobile ordering app at Starbucks here on campus. So that's a great new addition that we have now. Um, so you can mobile order that Starbucks drink that you love in the morning really quickly and get that taken care of. Um, so this is a full service Starbucks. So you can use your app here. Um, I always like to say when holiday cups drop off campus, they drop on campus too. Uh, when pumpkin spice drops off campus, it drops on campus too. The only difference is, the only perk is, is that you can use your dining dollars here. Um, and so that's a nice, really nice advantage that you get to take part of here at our Starbucks. Um, so now we're going to head into our university library um, and take a look at that. All right, welcome to our university library. Take a look around at all the books, tons of books. I'm just kidding. We do have books upstairs, uh, as well as we kind of have books all around the walls and everything like this. But this is a great new area to kind of collab, um, have different group study areas and everything like that. Um, in the back, we do have computer labs back there, as well as we have our peer tutoring center, um, which is really great. We have peer tutors that is student-led, um, so students can sign up for tutoring um, that's led by other students online. Um, all different times of the day, Monday through Saturday. Um, so that is um, a great option if you're, you know, if you need help in a class or if you just know that you kind of struggle with math or science or something like that, you can always sign up for our tutoring for free. If you are excelling in a class and doing really great at a class and you would like a job opportunity on campus, you can be a peer tutor and the university will actually pay you to be a peer tutor. So that's another great option to be, um, to get a job here on campus. That being said, um, right behind this red wall over here, we're going to go take a look at, that's our Division of Student Success. That's where all of our live coaches are housed, um, as well as our Director of Disability Support. Um, we have three licensed professional counselors back there, um, as well as one nurse practitioner back there as well. And our nurse practitioner also has an affiliation with the hospital that's right across the road from us, St. Luke's. Um, so if she, if she can't take care of you here, we can definitely get you taken care of over there at St. Luke's Hospital, which is a great option. Um, so let's go take a look at our Division of Student Success. So right back there is our peer tutoring center. As you can tell, we still do have peer tutoring um, during spring break as well. Uh, so obviously, it's a lot um, more full um, during regular class times, but we still have those options during spring break as well. Um, so the university still does remain open for spring break and everything like that. So if you're trying to catch up on a class or preparing for a class or something like that, feel free to take advantage of that as well. All right, we are in our Division of Student Success. Um, this is home to all of our life coaches, as well as our um, Director of Disability Support, our nurse practitioner, and our three licensed professional counselors are all around the corner as well. Um, so you'll learn about our life coach model. Um, this is where all of them are housed. They're great people. Um, they can help you with a lot of different things. What we like to say in admissions is when you're trying to get here as a student, when you're applying to get here, admissions is your one-stop shop for everything, financial aid, everything like that. When you get here as a student, your life coach is basically going to be your one-stop shop for everything. So if you need help with anything, you stop by here at the Division of Student Success and they'll make sure to help you out with anything that you need. Um, but other than that, also a fun place to just hang out. If you want to pop in, say hi to anybody, feel free to come on in. Um, great, great area. Um, but no, not necessarily. Like, like right there. <laughs> There's Lachey right there. Yeah, no, you don't have to make um, you don't Hello. have to you don't have to make an appointment with Lachey or your life coach. Um, they're always available by text message too. Um, so you can always text them, set up an appointment, say you're stopping in, anything like that, um, and that's always a perfect option for you as well. But yeah, we are going to now head on to our design and visual arts building. So as we're exiting um, the library to head to our next location, right over here, the stairwell takes you right up to our second floor of the library. Um, so up there are a few different things. So, um, we have our traditional library, our book circulation upstairs, as well as in the back, we have a quiet studying area, and in the front, we have more group study area as well. Um, so you know, if you're a quiet learner, you can always take advantage of that. If you like to have another group area um, to study, you can always take advantage of that. We also do have all of our librarians right behind us as a resource for you here at, the, uh, at our university. University Library, as well as our Apple Corps department. We have an Apple Corps department, which
which is a really cool, cool department. They're basically like a, your peer tutors for your iPad. Um, so if you're in a class and the professor's like, hey, you need to make an iMovie or something like that for the class, and you're like, oh, I've never used iMovie, you can always take advantage of our Apple Core department, and they're going to be able to help you kind of utilize your iPad and use it to the best of your ability. But yeah, well, let's head to our next location. So we're headed around the corner to our Design and Visual Arts building, which is right over here, um, as well as a few other things are located out here. So our McNally House, our 3D building, our eSports Lab, our Paw Print building, our Annex, they're all located out here as well um, for you to take advantage of um, to utilize those spaces. Um, so if you're part of our eSports team, you're going to be, you're gonna be uh, practicing um, right down there at our eSports Lab. Um, if you're part of the Design and Visual Arts Department, interior design, um, anything like that, that will all take place right out here. If you are a graphic design major or um, interactive design, um, game design, any of those majors, um, in our Center for Student Engagement, which we just passed, we do have a graphic design department, and that is ran by students. Um, so that's another job opportunity that you have on our campus. Um, so a lot of our student organizations need digital signage, they need marketing, different stuff like that. And so that's a great experience, um, great opportunity for you to gain experience as a graphic designer um, working for our Center for Student Engagement. Our design and visual arts building is on the website to be renovated over the next couple of years. Um, so definitely take a look at, we're going to show you what the design and visual arts building looks like right now, but definitely take a look at kind of what they're planning on that to look like over the next couple of years. So they are currently preparing for the senior show. Um, so there's a little bit of kind of maneuvering around happening. So this is going to be really exciting. Um, a lot of our students like, um, I always come to the senior show. It's really a cool opportunity to see some of our senior um, design and visual arts majors, um, kind of their final projects out on display down through here. Uh, so we have a whole bunch of different opportunities. We're just kind of kind of walk around this building a little bit. So obviously, a bunch of collaboration space um, for people to kind of work with. We have. Um, our different design studios, we have our different breakout rooms, classroom spaces over here, our drawing studios. We have a, obviously a lot of different art and des, um, des, uh, different projects on display, which is really cool uh, to just kind of see our students' works all around um, the area. We have our open studio, lab spaces, um, and then we are going to take a look right down here at some more of our classrooms right over here. Obviously some more of our artwork on display right over here, which is really cool, a bunch of different projects. This is more of our inter interior design area right now. So this is a lot of your lab space right over here. Um, we have a bunch of open classrooms, our design studios um, right over here where a lot of our different interior design students will work uh, on their softwares, um, interior design stuff. And then we obviously have um, some of their work on display, which is really cool. And then right over here, we have another one of our printing rooms. Um, so this is really cool for a lot of our different um, design and visual arts um, students to be able to print a lot of their work. And then right behind us, where we're going to make a complete circle of the building, is a lot of the professors and faculty's offices right over here. Um, so that, like I said, in um, Walker, a lot of our faculty and staff are centrally located. Um, so it's same for right out here. So if you're a design visual arts student, your faculty is going to be out here um, for their office hours, or if you just need to be able to get a hold of them for anything. So yes, this is the full circle of our Design and Visual Arts building. Like I mentioned, it is going to look different uh, here um, in a few years, especially uh, it's going to look different here in a few days with our senior show taking place. Um, so definitely take a look at that online as well. Yeah. Our schedules are flexible. Um, so I only have classes currently. This is not... It's not always this common, but I only have classes currently Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, but I do long days. Um, so I start at around uh, 11 o'clock and kind of go all the way till about 5, um, 5 p.m. Um, but that being said, uh, all kinds of students do it um, all differently. And so you can take, you know, one or two classes a day, um, but typically, you know, it's kind of up to you. You can fit it to your schedule to the best of your ability. Um, that being said, um, average class length just depends. So sometimes we have classes that are um, two times a week and those classes are about an hour and 15 minutes long. We have some classes that uh, go three times a week which are 50 minutes long and we have some classes that happen once a week and they're like two hours and 50 minutes long. Um, so those are usually more night classes as well.
So we are actually getting ready to head um, to our university auditorium. And so we will head into this academic, or these three academic buildings that are all connected, which is Kernigan Hall, um, Anheuser-Busch Hall, and Reed Hall, as well as that has attached our um, university auditorium. We'll take a look at our university auditorium, um, but the con current construction project that we have going on right now is actually to build our new um, auditorium and our new science wing. Um, and so that's really cool. We're really excited about that. That's going to be a new big 1,000-seat auditorium with a science wing wrapped around it, which will be a great, um, great addition to our university. Currently, our freshman class this year was right around 750 students. And so the auditorium that we're going to currently show you only has about 450 seats. Um, and so that's kind of the need for the new auditorium. Um, but we're happy that we're still growing. Um, and we're excited about all the new students on campus as well. So here we are in our FAF lobby. This is the lobby directly connected to our auditorium, which is right behind me. Um, so like I mentioned before, 450 students can be seated in our auditorium. It's a great event space for a lot of our events to take place, as well as we have one class that takes place in there, and that's Maryville Watches Movies. So for three elective credits, you can actually come in here once a week um, and watch a movie that the professor chooses and take, uh, you know, dissect the movie, kind of reflect on the movie, um, and you can use that as a great uh, opportunity to get three elective credits. Um, so we're actually going to spin around now um, and right behind our over here is our Maryville University St. Louis Speaker Series. Um, so kind of just talking about our, like our active learning um, ecosystem and just kind of uh, ways to expand on your learning environments is our Maryville University St. Louis Speaker Series. So each column is a different year. So this is the 2019-2020 year um, right here on the far right column and we actually bring all these speakers downtown to speak. Um, to the community and to our students. And those tickets are free to all of our students. So definitely I recommend taking advantage of that opportunity um, to hear some of these people speak. I really enjoy it. Um, we get priority seating, we get to have a lot of fun, um, and you get to hear some great um, famous people talk. So yeah, we're gonna head um, to our next three academic buildings that are all connected. Um, that being said, the way that you know that we're in a different academic building is two different ways. One, if you notice the tiles change color, we're in a different academic building. And two is if you look at the room numbers. So the second number of the room number tells you what building you're in, one, two, or three, which is coordinated to our Reed, Kernigan, or Anheuser-Busch Hall. So we're going to go check out those areas. So we are currently in Anheuser-Busch Hall. Um, right behind me, or right next to me, is our School of Business office suites. Um, so just like our Health Professions building, just like our Design and Visual Arts building, all of our School of Business faculty are located, their offices are right um, in here. And so then the floor right below us, since this is a three-floor building, the floor right below us is the School of Education, and the floor right above us is the College of Arts and Sciences. Um, so all those faculty members, um, staff members, are going to be centrally located, easy for um, students to access uh, if they need to do office hours or anything like that. We are going to head down our Anheuser-Busch hallway, um, but right on the other side here was Kernigan Hall. Um, it still is Kernigan Hall, um, and that's where all of our science labs are currently held. And so like I said, um, when the new construction is finished, um, those will move over there, um, and then we'll start um, working on these other areas in these academic buildings. So let's uh, go check out Anheuser-Busch Hall. So right through the window, we are going to head in here. Um, this is our Cyber Fusion Center. Um, this is two-thirds of our Cyber Fusion Center. So the other third is right on the other side. Um, and we'll see that right on the other side of our tour. Um, and then right as we finish our Cyber Fusion Center, we're actually going to go upstairs and check out one of our classrooms as well. So we are in the newest part of our Cyber Fusion Center. Um, so a lot of different things take place in here. Um, we have a great cybersecurity club, um, one of our other clubs here located on our campus. Um, and so that's a great um, way to take advantage if you're not a cybersecurity student, but you're still interested in cybersecurity or kind of just having a great time learning about different technology, um, different ways to protect your technology. Our cybersecurity club is a great option to take, um, take advantage of that. In here, we have classes that take place in here, as well as, you know, we have our tech bar in the back. So if you need some of your technology worked on, that can all be taken care of in the back as well. So we are actually going to head around the corner. Um, we are going to check out the other part of our Cyber Fusion Center, and then we're going to go upstairs to one of our classrooms.
So we're getting ready to enter the uh, computer lab portion of our Cyber Fusion Center. Um, but before we head in there, we're actually going to take a look outside these windows. This is currently where our construction is taking place on our new auditorium and science wing. Um, but also what we like to point out is in the distance, that building that's directly um, in front of you is Booter Commons on the right side. Um, and so that is kind of another like lobby area for like the apartments. So there's a lot of couches down there, a lot of tables. Um, some of your um, university seminar classes might take place down there and a bunch of different events might take place down there as well. On the left side of that building though is public safety. That's where public safety's offices are located. Um, so like I said, we have two to three public safety officers on duty 24-7, 365 days a year. And so they, their offices are located right down there. So if you need a new student ID, need a new parking permit, anything like that, that will happen at our public safety office. The building right to the left of me now, or sorry, my right, your left, um, is one of our apartment complexes. Um, and so we have five apartment complexes on campus. That's Cedar, Elm, Maple, Oak, and Pine, all named after trees. Um, and so we have a couple different options for these apartment complexes. This, like I said before, this is a great option for our sophomore, juniors, and seniors. If they're looking for a little bit more freedom than a res hall, um, then you can have the advantage of living in one of our apartments. So you get all the perks of living on campus, just a little bit more freedom of having an apartment. Um, so those come in two bedroom, two bath, living room and kitchen options, or four bedroom, two bath, living room and kitchen options. And those kitchens come with stove, oven, microwave, full refrigerator, sink, dishwasher, dining room table. Um, the living room comes with a couch, a chair, another table, you, cable TV, and the rooms are set up just like all of our other rooms. Um, so you know, you get the bed, the bed frame, um, the desk, the chair, everything like that. So those are always great options um, for some of our upperclassmen as well. But let's go check out the other part of our Cyber Fusion Center, and then we'll head upstairs to one of our classrooms. So here's more of the computer lab section of our um, Cyber Fusion Center. Um, and so a lot of our different cyber students um, have classes in here, as well as you can also just work in here on your free time. Um, so whenever this is not being utilized for class time, you can more than welcome to come in here and work on homework, anything like that. Um, we do have a manager of our Cyber Fusion Center, um, so he's a great resource. Um, if you ever need any help with any Cyber Fusion questions or anything like that, another great resource we have. Um, what's another great um, advantage of our Cyber Fusion Center and our cybersecurity program is we do partner with a lot of nonprofits to provide cybersecurity services. Um, so definitely um, ask your admissions counselor, um, talk to some cybersecurity um, students about if you're interested in cybersecurity, um, about the different partnerships um, and different hands on experiences that you're going to get here as a Maryville student. Um, so let's go check out one of our classrooms. All right, we are getting ready to walk into uh, one of our classrooms here in Anheuser-Busch Hall. Um, this is room 3245. Um, this is one of our newer classrooms here on campus. So this is very much what a lot of our classrooms look like here on Maryville's campus. Um, so we have a lot of flexible furniture. Uh, we have a projector for the front screen right here. This is also a whiteboard wall. A lot of maneuverable uh, whiteboards all across the way, um, as well as they can film the classes in here as well, which is a lot of great opportunities. If you notice on all the backs of these pods, there's TVs as well. So we have a lot of options for like breakout groups, different stuff like that. And then if we also take a look at these walls right over here, these are actually garage doors, glass garage doors. Um, so if you're teaching in here, you have the opportunity to raise all the glass doors and then have one big classroom space or actually lower them as well and have a bunch of different group um, breakout sessions as well. So TVs in there as well. Of course, all of them have Apple TVs. Um, you know, you can utilize your iPads and all of those. Um, so just a really great learning environment in here um, for students to learn from. So now uh, we are going to actually leave this classroom. Uh, we're going to go through Reed Hall um, and then we're going to check out one of our dining halls. All right, we are headed into Reed Hall. Um, which is our last academic um, space that we're going to travel through here on tour. Um, one of the great job opportunities that we have here on campus for you to gain um, you know, real job experience is abstract marketing. So if you are a marketing major, um, you have the opportunity to work for abstract marketing here on campus. Um, if you're a sports business major, you have the option to work for Rawlings, which is our partnership for Rawlings, um, and that's another great way to get um, on the job experience. Um, so we have a lot of different opportunities. Maryville is really um, focused on making sure that um, you're able to get a job um, post-graduation, so it's really great that your faculty are also um, concerned about you after college as well. Um, so, you know, we want you to have a great education experience, but we want to make sure you have a lot of great opportunities um, after college as well. So we are traveling through Reed, uh, which is definitely just a very like general education academic space. So a lot of generic classrooms in here. Um, 
And so on the bottom floor of this building, we have our IT department, as well as we have two more computer labs down there. Um, so if you need a computer lab, um, there's some downstairs, as well as there's computer labs that are used for some of our classroom spaces as well. Um, so we're getting ready to head out of REIT, and we're going to get head to um, Gander Dining Hall. Yeah, so um, what's great about our IT department, which is in the basement of Reed, is they're not necessarily only going to look at um, devices that we provide as a university. Um, they're more than welcome to look at, you know, if you have a Windows laptop and you want to bring that in, if you have just your personal laptop, they're more than welcome to look at that as well, um, as well as just help you with any general IT needs. That's also a great opportunity. They have a bunch of work study positions there too. Um, we have hundreds of work study positions all across campus for students to take a part in. Um, if they have federal work study, if they're doing institutional work study, a lot of different opportunities for you to get a job here on campus as well to make a little bit extra money while you're still studying. So we're wrapping up the end of our tour. We're actually in the, um, the ground floor of Gander Hall. Um, if you remember correctly, we are on the first floor of Gander um, for where we started, where the visitor center and admissions was. Um, just to recap one more time, we are on spring break. Um, so obviously Gander Dining Hall does not look like this when all our students are here. Um, it is a packed house in here um, whenever students are here for lunch and dinner. Um, and so we are going to go see our main um, largest dining facility on campus. Um, the other dining options that you had were Louis, um, our M store, as well as Starbucks as well. So I'm just going to walk you around um, all of the dining facility in here. Um, so everything is a la carte, um, just like Louis. So you can come in here, you know, we have grab and go stuff right off the front, candy, chips. Um, right over here in our coolers, we have, you know, salads, we have grab and go sandwiches, we have fresh fruits, fr fresh vegetables. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we have a sushi company come in and they actually roll sushi for us right here on campus and you can get sushi. Then we have our deli department, then we have our grill, and our grill's a great option, um, you know, if you want some chicken tenders, something like that. Right behind me is the Culinary Expo. Culinary Expo is, uh, you know, your Mongolian food, it's your pasta bar, everything like that. Um, then right over here is our chef's table. We're going to come right on the other side of this cooler and see our chef's table. Our chef's table is like your home cooked meal. Um, so if you're looking for like that nice home cooked meal, that's going to be right over here. Um, and then right over here is our pizza station as well. Our pizza station is personal pizzas you can order, um, made to order. Um, and then all of these options are available on our mobile ordering app as well. So that's a great option um, for you to take advantage of. If you're in a hurry, you want to order a pizza really quickly, um, hop on to the mobile app and get your pizza. We also have our dessert station and our salad bar right here in the middle. And then our, we have all of our drinks right back over here. Uh, so we do have Coca-Cola freestyle machines as well as bottled drinks, everything like that. And just like I mentioned before, um, everything you can grab. Um, if you're not going to order it on the app, feel free to order it in our kiosk here um, while you're in the um, facility. And then you just check it out right here at the cashiers. Um, and then you scan your student ID and you're good to go. All of our dining facilities also do accept cash, debit, credit, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, everything like that. Um, so, you know, if your family is visiting you on campus and they want to, you know, you don't have enough time to run off campus and get something, feel free um, to use any of our dining facilities here and grab a meal here. Um, Fresh Ideas does a really great job on um, providing our food here on campus. What they like to say is this is kind of like your kitchen. Um, so a lot of you, a lot of us as students, we are moving here um, and we're living on campus and we're moving away from home and so this is our kitchen. And so they're great about if you have dietary restrictions, allergies, anything like that, everything is clearly marked. Um, as well as we have two executive chefs here. Um, so anytime that you need help with anything, um, there's a push for help buttons all around and our executive chefs will come out and they'll be able to make sure that everything is made um, correctly um, and so you're able to eat and get a great meal. Um, we also do have a student's experience manager here, so if you have any questions or concerns regarding our food, that's always a great option to speak to her um, about you know, getting, getting more options or a different option or if you're just looking for something specific. Um, so Fresh Ideas does a really great job accommodating all of our food needs. Um, we have a lot of, great, uh, a lot of fun here at the dining hall um, and also like, food's super important, so like, um, who doesn't want a great meal? So we're actually going to head um, back upstairs now and wrap up our uh, portion of the tour. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so when I was looking at universities, 
Um, I was looking at all sorts of different universities, large universities, state universities, um, and then my aunt actually brought me here um, to Maryville. She lives in the area. And so right off the bat, how accommodating and friendly the university is, the community that we have here is definitely very appealing um, to students and to families. Um, so right off the bat, when I walked into admissions um, and they helped me right off the bat, that was really great. Um, the other thing is just like the community that we have here at Maryville and the opportunities that you're given. So um, anything from like the cl small classroom sizes um, to the personal, you know, the personalization of faculty getting to know you, as well as all your opportunities outside the classroom as well. So all those opportunities that I've been given as a student leader um, is really appealing and really makes me love Maryville. Um, so just the spirit of our students as well um, and the student life that we have here is really great. So yeah. That is why I love Maryville. Um, I hope to see you here. It's been a true pleasure to have you on tour today. Um, if you have any questions, please contact admissions. Um, we would love to have you on tour here as well. Um, and so uh, we look forward to seeing you and we hope you have a great rest of your day.